Liam Halligan, the economics commentator for The Telegraph, joins me now. Will Hutton, of course, is still here. Will Hutton, last year you called George Osborne the kamikaze chancellor. Were you wrong? I think I called him the kamikaze chancellor rather earlier than that. Look, I, I, economies uh, have cycles. They go up, they go down. Um, that's uh, one of the rhythms of economic life. Um, I remember back in 2010, I published a book called Them and Us, and uh, I, had to I had to make a decision about when I thought um, levels of output would get back to where they were in 2008. Mm. And, you know, normally, I mean, the Great Recession, uh, 1930, it took four years. And the Office of Budget Responsibility and others were, and Liam and others were saying, we're going to get back, uh, back to those 2008 levels of output in 2012. When I saw George Osborne's first budget, 100 <laughs> days in, I thought, it's not going to take longer than that. And it has taken longer than that. And, of course, what happened was but he's, he's, taken his, he's, he's taken his foot off the deficit reduction the last uh, 12, 18 months. It's actually stable. And we're going to renew the deficit reduction. The way I see the world, I think, has been 100% validated. <laughs> One, the thing has lasted for six years, not, for, uh, not four, the longest, actually, for more than 100 years. When he, takes his, when he actually has a, a pause in it, we get some kind of recovery. And a snapback is what we were always going to get and we're watching a snapback. Right. The question is what follow-through there will be after snapback. So and I'm just sure lucky. Liam will agree 100%. So Liam, did, George Osborne was <laughs> just hero, lucky. My hero, my <laughs> hero. Was George Osborne just lucky? It's just the cycle. Jo, I'm not going to be painted into an austerity versus growth corner as some why kind not? of defender for the, for the coalition yeah, by Will or any, right? other, any other of George my heroes. <laughs> but this, this is the economic reality. Yes, growth is going to be better than we've seen. We will, we've just had two consecutive quarters uh, of, of growth for the first time since mid-2011. We're about to get a third, um, but it's a very long way from a recovery. I have serious problems, actually, with the UK's economic policy mix. We're still running a very big uh, trade deficit, the biggest trade deficit in 34 years last year. It's carried on into this year. You know, the money that we're borrowing is actually bigger than the increase in nominal GDP. We've got credit card lending, the second high, the, the, the highest it's been for, uh, for all but one month in the last 11 years. But, Liam, does, does that mean that Will was right, that actually the austerity policies undertaken no, by the government's I... choked off recovery no, it doesn't for three mean years? That, it doesn't mean he's right at all, but, you know, it, it's not as if you're either, you know, for austerity or against austerity. What I'm saying, it, what I'm saying is that... The growth that we're seeing, yes, it's great that we've got some growth. It's great that there'll be a little bit more investment now. But we're all being extremely complacent. The UK economy has not turned a corner. Our gilts market is, position, is, is propped up by, by printed money. In my view, Will, to spend even more, to increase borrowing even more, would make the situation even so, worse. I mean, you were saying it would have been worse. would make the situation on international uh, say, capital markets I mean, I, even more years, precarious. For 30 years, I've been trying to argue <laughs> that Keynesian economics and I'm a Keynesian economist, is not about the doctrine of permanently uh, having budget deficits. Uh, it, that wasn't what Keynes argued. But you were in favour of spending more I in was, 2010. I was in favour in favor, um, of reproducing in 2010 what we did uh, after the IMF crisis in the 70s. We took eight years um, to get back to budget balance then, and I, my view was we should take eight years uh, to do it. It will be 10. And it would, talking about no, no, surplus no, no, in but, 2020 but it would be much now. better. it would be much better, we would much better pre-declared that in 2010 than actually do what was done. We were going to utterly unnerving. There was, I mean, there's been some savage, savage uh, cuts in, in uh, local governments. But actually, they haven't project. carried out all the cuts they said they were going to do in the time scale. So our national but, debt has doubled in the last six years, yeah. and in the next four, it's going to increase by another 50%. Yeah, but we focus on the... In here in Westminster, everybody focuses on the deficit. It's not about the deficit. It's about the debt. And the debt is the still... The debt is massively increasing. What about, though? I mean, the, how much more... Hold on a minute. I mean, I think, but, you know, it's about... It's, of well, that's course, what the numbers of course, say. No, but of course it's about... <laughs> it's about debt in a larger sense than that, Liam. I mean, the... I, 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 well, hold on a minute. The story, the, story, the story is about private debt, uh, much more than public debt. Uh, the story actually is about an economy which actually does not have, as you've identified mm. correctly, it does not have a strong traded goods sector which can sell goods and services overseas. Absolutely. So there hasn't been that a rebalancing, has there? There has not been not rebalancing. On the contrary. The response... Um, by our economy 
to this big devaluation, one of the biggest in our history, has been unbelievably disappointing. Yes, uh, but can I just ask you how it did George Osborne, in the rhetoric he mm. used, choke off consumer demand early? We're never going to know exactly, no. I mean, we're never going to know categorically whether we would of have course. got growth last year or the year before, whether there was a stimulus undertaken by Labour if they had been in power, or whether George Osborne has been right to try and shrink the state and that growth has come back, albeit anemically. But did he choke off consumer demand with his policies? We can never know because of the counterfactual. All I would say, for all the political parlour games that we're engaged in, even in this interview, the reality is, in the last four or five years in this country, we've actually seen, in numerical terms, the biggest Keynesian boost mm. in our history. Because public spending look has continued. Look at the continued. Treasury no, but, book. But, but, but look at the Liam, increase you, in public sector debt. A smart debt. guy like you. I mean, a <laughs> smart guy like you. I mean, one of the younger you heroes. You can feel an insult being, uh, coming. You know, no, no, no. Would, would, would I dare? Would I, would I dare? Would I dare? But, I mean, you know it's all about with your uh, getting ahead and behind the curve. You know. The, what I mean, the idea of having an element of pump rhyming when you're in crisis conditions like in 2008, 2009, 2010 is actually to get ahead of the curve. What happened, the reason why debt went up was that we got behind the curve. Sure, the, so sure. The dynamic of this under is... Under policies that you, do, you defended for years and years and years under, the, under, under Gordon and, Powell. And when uh, you I'm, said... I'm absolutely, absolutely, absolutely not. Come on. <laughs> I am absolutely not. You that's said really there would a, be that's no... That's a calumny. Uh -huh. <laughs> right, you two. <laughs> Did you, you know the economic it's going to be this interesting. No, I didn't actually. <laughs> if I'd known, we'd have done more on it. You said there'd be no growth in 2013. That's what you said. You said on the basis of what had been carried out by George Osborne, there'd be no growth. There is growth. No, and in that no, sense, no, in that no, sense, no, you no, were wrong. No, no, no. I've always tried to say, you know, you have peak levels of output in 2000. 2000. All right, and this is no, your no, snapback. No, 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 no. Okay, so 2008, you had a peak. The output got to, its, got to a peak. It then fell. The question was when it was going to get back yeah. to its previous peak. The, everyone said it would be 2011, 2012. I've stuck to position it will be 2014. Right. It will be 2014. Okay. And I don't, I don't consider that to be a wrong call. All right, That's Liam Halligan, can I just say about cost of living? Sure. Because growth has returned, but the big question is cost of living because we still have prices going way ahead of, of wages. Do you think that that is actually going to continue? We're not going to see that correct for how long? Absolutely. Not only are I mean, the, the squeeze on wages, on real wages, has been almost unprecedented in the last hundred years. Yes, we've got nominal GDP growth happening, but of course we've got interest rates lower than inflation, so people are losing out on their savings. There will continue to be a cost of living squeeze. But in, in my view, with, with all respect, the way to increase the cost of living is not to borrow and spend more in a situation where you're already at the very limit of what you can borrow and spend, so much so that our guilt market has to continue to be right, propped I'm going up. To have, no, I'm going to have to stop you We there. have to innovate and invest our way out of this crisis. And actually that Hallelujah is to that, but and not you, necessarily and the, state and the, investment and the public that we can't framework, afford, and the public, and the, right. and there has to be a public framework set. We need our own show. Yes, you do. Yeah. Yeah. You two can meet again afterwards. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> we rang each other privately as well. As well I can tell you. <laughs> I'm delighted to hear it. Now, the, the long, be quiet. The long.